Hello, Base family, and welcome to Everything Base. Today we're moving on with our Hyperneck studies, and that's Hyperneck 14, and the final Hyperneck. Um, I was initially thinking about running you guys through every kind of variation I've done, working through all 12 keys, but I think by now you guys get it, and I don't want to you know, beat you over the head with all the different variations you, you can do with the simple concept of the Hyperneck study. But I, you know, I'm kind of going to go off script here and just kind of give you a little bit of a, uh, an overview. So if you've watched all the previous Hypernecks, what I've done is I, you know, you start by doing the key of C on two strings. Then I move and separated the strings, even going from the E string to the G string. Then I added some keys, you know, a simple one flat, two flats, one sharp, two sharps, and showed you that. I changed directions on some. I did a one single string exercise. You can take this concept and change it in your own right. Um, go to different keys, try different uh, processes, start high, go low on the instrument. All these things really reinforce that you know what your how your fingerboard's laid out, you know how to find the notes of your fingerboard. And once, it sounds like such a small thing, but if you can understand all where all the notes on your fingerboard are, then that just makes your chances of being able to quickly learn things uh, will be better. You'll be more free to explore the instrument, especially in those cool improv moments live where you're just kind of going off the cuff. You'll have confidence because you won't be in the area on the bass that you're not sure where the notes are. Um, if you're a four string player and you get your first five string, I encourage you to do the hypernex studies incorporating the B string uh, into, the, into the rest of the bass and you'll have it down like that. So what are I finishing with? Well, it's kind of the big finale in the key of C. So we're back to the key of C. And now we're doing all four strings together. And this is kind of more of, if you've done all the previous units, this is kind of proof that you now know your fingerboard much better. So just gonna run through a couple patterns. You can download the sheet music, uh, which is written in tab and the standard notation from my um, uh, Patreon account, which is in the description below. But basically, we're gonna play three notes off of every string and to, you know, uh, all natural. So we're gonna go F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that sounds like this. Now we start on the F, so next we start on the G. Go G, A, B. Okay. Then we go to the A. And so on. So remember, the concept's pretty simple. Find the lowest frettable note that's in the key you're working on. We're working on the key of C, so we can play F. Play three notes that are natural. Go to the next string in that hand position. Go to the next string, and go to the next string. Then you go start on the second string, or second note of the pattern, so G, and you're gonna do the same thing. And I really, this is like beating a dead horse, but um, I like to say the notes when I play them, and, and, and so practice slowly, but say the notes. It really reinforces, it sounds weird, but just verbalizing what note you're playing helps you retain. So by going G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, really helps you get this down. Um, the, what's written is just ascending every pattern going all the way up. But you could also try doing it backwards because we're not really fabulous at saying the alphabet backwards. So playing from the C and then going and so on and so forth. I hope this series has um, really solidified uh, your fingerboard. It's made you better at shifting. Um, of course, just basic technique of being able to fret clean notes and string skip with your right hand. All these things I hope the, this Hypernex study series has, has, has remedied and made you better. Um, this is something also that once you're done, you shouldn't just say, okay, I'm done. It's a good one to review. Um, and as I mentioned before, if you've downloaded the sheet music for every single one of these, put them in a binder and like make part of your warm up to just cycle through them. There's 14 of these. So that means you have, if you practice seven days a week, you have two weeks worth. So day one, do the first one. Day two, do the second one, and so on and so forth. After the 14th one, start over on one. Just by reviewing it, keeping it fresh, you're gonna find, first of all, it's, the, the learning curve flattens out. You, you're, you're just not gonna have a hard time at it because it's, everything's gonna get a lot easier. And then everything after that that you practice that day, you'll be more warmed up, your fingerboard will be fresh in your mind, and I just think it's a good recipe for success. 
But let me know what you think in the comments below. Just share, say, hey, I've tried these out. Here's some problems I'm having. Or no, these are great. These are working good. What about, you know, suggest, hey, what about doing it this way? And I, I love that kind of back and forth communication. It means a lot to me. And, and I get a lot out of it. And I think everyone else who just watches the thread gets a lot out of it too. So we have uh, now our encore item. We're going into... Um, Oh, a trio album that I really love. Now, this album came out in 2002, and it's Alex Skolnick's um, Goodbye to Romance. So Alex Skolnick was Testament's guitar player, phenomenal, phenomenal guitar player. And I actually I had an opportunity when I was working at Musicians Institute to meet him, and he's just an outstanding person. Um, but I really was inspired by him and his story. So here, you know, Testament is a phenomenal band, great following. Uh, he's a very, very respected player, uh, yet... He was unsatisfied. He wanted to broaden his horizons. So he went to the new school, yeah, the new school in New York and studied jazz. And the, one of the things he did upon graduating is he released this album. It's a, he has a great trio with Nathan Peck on bass. Nathan, an amazing bass player, really appreciate him. Um, and what he did, which I just love, is he took heavy metal songs and did jazz versions of them, instrumental jazz versions on them. And it's just the coolest thing. I think it just expanded my um, musicality to hear songs that I've known for decades, but hear them in a jazz styling where he reharmonized it and to hear the band going on. I mean, some of the great songs, uh, Detroit Rock City by Kiss, he does a great version of uh, War Pigs, an incredible version of War Pigs. Um, and obviously Goodbye to Romance, Ozzy's tune, which is gorgeous the way he does it. And there's a ton, I mean, I'm not gonna go through the entire list. Um, so listening to it, it, it opened my mind up to thinking about and some of the original product or original recordings I've done, or I should say solo recordings, because um, they're not original. Because I would sit and go, okay, well, I'm going to take this song and do an instrumental version where I play uh, just using basses. I call them boas, which is B-O-A, bass only arrangements. I take a, a classic song, change the styling. If it was a 16th note, really dri driving rock song, I turned it into like a eighth note shuffle blues, and I, you know, just those things were so good for my compositional practice, uh, technique practice, everything. I just taking it out. And it was really inspired by this album. The second thing I love doing, if you're, especially if you're a fan of heavy metal, but you get um, maybe a host dinner party with people that aren't, is throw this on. It's great to play in the background because that'll be like, ooh, who is this? And you're like, oh, it's Alex Skolnick Trio. What they don't realize is they're listening to songs by Ozzy, Kiss, uh, um, uh, just, oh, uh, Scorpions. So anyway, it's just a great recording. And Nathan, you're a great bass player, um, really phenomenal. I've had opportunity to meet him a couple times also. Um, and uh, he's just been a gentleman and he's just such a great um, student of the instrument. He just is always pushing his envelopes, always trying to strive for the next level. And I admire that um, in Nathan quite a bit. Okay, so there it is. There's our um, Hypernick, final Hypernick study. And Goodbye to Romance by Alex Skolnick Trio featuring Nathan Peck. Hope you guys enjoy this. Um, if you have any questions about the Hypernext series, if I left something out, even though I'm saying I'm ending it, I don't mind. I'll just do a, uh, I'll do a pro or a, a, an epilogue video. I'll do a, a you know, a, a son of Hypernext. If there's something you guys need me to cover, I will be glad to do it. This channel is for you and I wanna make sure it fits what you need. Okay guys, I will see you at the next video. Mm -hmm.